Hey guys, this is Rudy coming at you live from Palm Beach in Florida. It is Wednesday. It is April the 3rd. The uh, first quarter is in the book. And uh, since you know by now that I'm an energy bull, we're going to take a quick look and see what the best performing stocks were in the energy sector for the first three months of the year. So year to date up until April the 3rd, which is today. And uh, let's see how we did and who the winners were and who the losers were. And uh, you can tell me if you hold some of these and uh, if so, why? If not, why not? Um, but anyway, the, uh, the basic concept here, and I'm just gonna pause on this slide here for a minute is that you wanna hold something in your portfolio. You, you don't have to have uh, a whole lot of energy stocks, but uh, obviously most of the videos that I make are about energy equities. So, um, you know, for that purpose, I'm not only an energy bull, but I'm also a fan of energy because people use it every single day. We need it, we use it, we want it, we have to live with it, uh, we have no choice. And uh, as a result, when you have a, a situation where there's per almost permanently a, a favorable supply demand curve, in other words, people want this, uh, whatever it might be, natural gas, uh, petroleum products, gasoline for your vehicles, uh, thermal coal for heating, etc. Uh, as long as people want it and need it and it's lifting people out of poverty all across the world as they get more and more uh, access to, to energy, uh, it's a good thing. So uh, it's a relatively easy sector to invest in, which is a little bit less tricky than, for instance, let's say, uh, semiconductors like NVIDIA, where everybody who's, who's in NVIDIA and has a position in NVIDIA has done great. Congratulations to you all. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, it's not quite like my example of buy when everybody really, really needs it and maybe sell when there's less demand or everybody no longer needs it. In the case of energy, we need it almost permanently all the time. It's like food. You got to have it, right? So uh, according to Bankrate, the best energy stocks as of April 2024, and as I said, today is the third, include these 10 stocks that are listed here on the left-hand side, Marathon, Valero, Targa, Diamondback, et cetera. And you can see the percentages over here in the middle of the screen, uh, sort of year to date. This is pretty damn good, huh? So if you're in Marathon, 35% um, year to date, not bad after three months, right? So you've got a couple of 30s here. There's a few 20s here. There's a few in the high teens, all pretty good. The reason why I put these green arrows here on the left-hand side, and I'm highlighting five of them, Marathon, Valero, Pioneer Natural Resources, Exxon, and the Williams companies is because I actually hold them in XLE. So I've talked about XLE many, many times before. It's an ETF, an exchange traded fund. And uh, it's top 10 positions, or top nine really, is over here on the right-hand side. But the, uh, the five matching green arrows is Exxon, where XLE has a 23% weight, Marathon, Pioneer, Valero, and Williams, you see. So even though I don't hold uh, some of these stocks directly, uh, I actually do hold them through XLE. And I have said in many videos before, you can just buy XLE sort of almost as a parking lot until the, there's a cheap stock that comes along like an Occidental Petroleum or something like that, that you can buy for 10 bucks and then just hold and maybe get a five, six, seven, even 10 X over time. Um, when you don't know where to put the money, put the money to work at, very, at the very least and put it into something like XLE and you get the uptick of the uh, ETF in addition to the dividend that they pay. So what I'm going to do is, firstly, I'm going to compare these five stocks. And then at the end of the video, I'm just going to give you a quick snapshot on each one of the five so you can sort of take a look and see if there's any of those that you might want to invest money in or not. The easiest pickup right from the get-go is something like XLE. For the average typical investor who is afraid of maybe uh, making single stock selections, which are high risk, the ETF gives you a little bit of protection in that regard because you can always hold the ETF and uh, mitigate some of the risk. So if something like, let's say on the left-hand side here, uh, just for the sake of um, uh, an example, if Diamondback Energy were to crash, it doesn't really, really matter in the greater scheme of things because all the others might still be okay or thereabouts, right? So um, that's the uh, sort of easy sort of opening statement to what I'm talking about here. So let's compare the five. And I have them in order here at the bottom. You can follow along, Marathon, Valero, et cetera. And uh, the same order is going to be repeated in every slide for the next three or four slides. And this is from bar chart, which allows you to actually um, analyze five uh, stocks side by side. So you can make a quick comparison and see what it is that you might want to invest in or not when you're trying to select a single stock. Now, when you pick a winner or two out of five, you still need to do a little bit more due diligence and a little bit more homework. Uh, but I'm giving you the highlights really here to help you make, your, make that decision. 
So for starters, these are all easy because they're all trade on the New York Stock Exchange. So I don't have different currencies or emerging markets, developed markets, et cetera. They're all just uh, NYSE stocks, easy picks. And uh, over here at the bottom, you can see that they are similar, but not the same, right? So I do like a little bit of diversification in my portfolio. So even in the energy sector, I want portfolio diversification within that sector. And at the bottom here, you can see that these five stocks actually gives you some of it, right? So for the most part, Marathon and Valero, sort of the same refining and marketing, but then we deviate slightly from that with US exploration and product, international integrated, which is Exxon, a super major. And of course we have production and pipeline, which is Williams companies on the far right. So I'm gonna keep the same order and we go through these and we quickly see what they look like. Now, for those of you who don't remember the 20 day raw stochastic, I always look at just for the sake of uh, not um, shortchanging the technicals, um, and, and for sure, there are a couple of technical nerds on this channel, so uh, I want to make sure we uh, sort of address everything we can. As a general rule at the top here, in case you've forgotten what it is, if it's above 80%, then it's near at the top of its high-low range or it's overbought, and if it's below 20, it's oversold. Now, we don't have anything that's below 20 over here, but we have all of them literally in the 90s, right? So we've got 95 uh, getting close to 100. So if you look at the 20-day raw stochastic, they are all overbought. So now what we do is we sort of offset that or maybe bookend that on the other side of the equation by looking at the price earnings ratio. We want a ratio, the lowest ratio in theory indicates the best price or the best value for you to open a new position if that were what you were wanting to do. So you can see at a glance here where I put the two green arrows, we have Marathon and Valero with a price earnings ratio of below 10. That's very attractively priced. Right, so now the thing that you need to do is just make sure that it's not uh, a, a very sort of, let's say, uh, desirable PE ratio, but for all the wrong reasons, right? We do, do want to do a little bit more homework before we just make a decision based on that. Um, the other two over here, not bad, because they're sort of below 15, 16, which is where the S&P 500 is currently trading in terms of PE ratio. And Williams Companies looks to be a little bit more expensive, but we're going to take a quick deeper dive in just a minute as a snapshot just to see where they are on an individual basis. Now, here's a little bit of math I like to do. Uh, I'm comparing on the key statistics uh, comparison here, the market capitalization or the market valuation, right? So the total number of outstanding shares multiplied by the share price. And I'm comparing that to the annual sales that the company is generating. And here we have a company. So immediately on the far left side, we have a company that's generating almost $150 billion in sales and it has a market cap of only $76 billion, right? So the market cap of the company or the market valuation of Marathon Petroleum is only half, 50% of what it generates annually in sales. And Valero is actually very, very similar. In fact, even better if you use this as a benchmark because it is generating $145 billion in sales and it's got a market cap of only 59, it's 41%. Now, I didn't put those in green and these in red because red is dangerous necessarily here, the middle one is Exxon. You can almost buy Exxon just anyway with your eyes shut and you can throw a dart at the, uh, at the energy sector. And if you hit Exxon or Chevron, you can pretty much just buy them and hold them. They're okay. As, as is the case with other super majors as well, like Total and Shell and BP and so on. Uh, I mean, they're volatile from time to time and they jump up and down as there are things happening in the market. But for the most part, you can just buy them and hold them, especially if you're young and you have a nice uh, long ramp up that you can hold them for a long, long period of time. So I didn't put the equation here in red because it's scary. I just put it in red compared to the other two that are green because it's different, right? So we have annual sales by Exxon of about $19 billion with a market cap of 60. So it's a 300% differential between the two, right? And I have the same over here, 134 billion, 473. Then I have 10 billion and 50 billion, right? This is not extraordinary. In fact, for a company uh, to have a market valuation of two or three times its annual revenue is quite normal. And uh, there's nothing scary about the, uh, the red highlights here. Uh, but the green is certainly very, very attractive. They all have positive earnings, as you would expect from the energy sector right now with uh, uh, Brent and WTI trading sort of in the, uh, well, right now in the mid, mid 80s or almost 90. So uh, you'd expect them to have positive earnings. They've all reported and the most dividend has recently been paid. So if you were buying it for the dividend, you've uh, kind of missed the last dividend because the dividend date has just passed. 
if we look at it on a picture for people who prefer graphs instead of uh, tables and rows, uh, over a one year period, we look at bar charts comparing the few and you can see Marathon was a wonderful pick. If you're long in Marathon, you're up 67%. Uh, this three in the middle here, all three of them together, pretty good, right? The, the worst performer of the three, 29, and the best of the three, 36. And only Exxon is a bit of a laggard, but you don't really want to view Exxon as a laggard. Exxon is just a buy and hold in your portfolio. Uh, you're not going to expect it to, uh, you know, skyrocket to the moon in terms of the stock price, but it's going to sort of, you know, trickle up a little bit over time, depending on the price of the commodity. And of course, you can bank the dividend as you go and preferably invested in a dividend reinvestment program, which means you can just buy more stock all the time. So Exxon is almost like uh, just your proverbial high interest savings account. If you take the small uptick in um, the stock price uh, that you'll achieve over time, which will compound plus your reinvested dividends, you'll do quite well. So let's quickly uh, take a snapshot of these five and walk through them. You can buy Marathon currently for about 200 bucks. Is it cheap or is it expensive? Well, it's actually quite inexpensive. The price earnings ratio is under nine. It's a large cap value stock with a market cap of almost $78 billion. It pays a you know, de decent or reasonable dividend, 1.56%. Um, that's because of the uh, uh, stock price that has spiked so high of recent uh, or of late, the dividend, which is $3.30, expressed as a percentage of, this, of the current stock price, only 1.56, but uh, $3.30 per share on a quarterly basis, not bad. I wouldn't be surprised if they increase the dividend a little bit uh, the next quarter. In addition to that, you can see the performance of Marathon over the past couple of months or so has easily outperformed the indices, the uh, orange, purple, and blue lines over here being the uh, Dow, S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. Not too much short interest in the middle at the bottom here, and you can see it's trading at its 52-week high. Uh, but it could be a potential buy. In fact, of the five, uh, this would probably be my, my first or second pick. Uh, and my other pick, in other words, if Marathon is number one, Valero might be my number two. Also, um, 180 bucks, so also about a $200 stock. Uh, it's got a market cap of $59.5 billion, which makes it a mid-cap value stock. Pays a little bit of a juicier dividend, $4.28 per share, which is currently yielding 2.42. And you can see, although Valero has actually underperformed the indices for most of the last year, it suddenly spiked over the last couple of months and uh, had a nice uptick there. At the bottom, in the middle of the screen, you can see 3.5%, so 3.5% of the shares outstanding. The shares outstanding are in the middle there, 329 million shares, 3.5% of the uh, Shares are sold short right now. People are expecting it to pull back a little bit, but not too many. It's also trading at its 52-week high. That doesn't mean you shouldn't buy it because it's got a PE ratio of only seven. Pioneer, a little bit, uh, a little bit different. So the PE ratio is slightly higher. This one's a large cap value stock as well, $62.9 billion in market cap, also sitting at its 52-week high. It has been an underperformer, but also spiked over the last month or so. Uh, and the short interest is also only about 3% or so, so not too bad. Pioneer Natural Resources is also something that can be in your portfolio, or otherwise, it can just be part of XLE, and you can just hold it and sleep comfortably at night without too much fear or risk of single stock risks. Exxon, of course, as I just mentioned a few minutes ago, something you can buy and just tuck away in your portfolio, and you can almost, you know, proverbially forget about it uh, and just hold it and keep it. $120, this is a super major, so it's a large cap value stock. It's got a market cap of almost $500 billion. The um, PE ratio sort of slightly higher, but still attractively priced with a PE ratio of 13. It's yielding $3.80 as dividends, more than 3%. That's pretty good. Uh, short interest is only 2.75. It's actually kind of, kind of normal, as you can see on the other slides that I've shown you as well. It's also trading near its 52-week high, as to be expected with the recent... Uh, you know, sort of spike in energy prices. They've all had a little uptick. Exxon, you can see, has been a, a terrible underperformer versus the indices, but has also uh, spiked uh, lately over the past couple of months or so and performed quite nicely. So it looks like a nice recovery year by Exxon. And then the final one, William. So this one is uh, a little different because you also have pipelines here. So it gives you a bit of diversification. You can buy for 40 bucks. It's got a market cap of almost $50 billion right in the middle of the screen. This is a mid-cap blend stock. And then what you have is a PE ratio of just under 15, which is okay. And you have an annual dividend yield, which is actually 
kind of attractive. It's uh, currently paying a dollar and ninety cents on a forty dollar stock, which means it's yielding almost five percent. And uh, like the others, it's also trading near its fifty-two week high. It's only got short interest of one point eight, and you can see that Williams, unlike the other four, has actually on a sort of uh, comparative basis outperformed the indices. Uh, took a little bit of a dip and then spiked again. So uh, it's looking pretty good sort of in terms of where it is right now. But those are your top performers for uh, 2024 year to date for the first three months. So um, you're probably going to recognize some of these if you have energy stocks at all. And uh, you might like some of them enough to actually even uh, add to your existing position or open a new position. Uh, if in doubt and you don't know what to do and you'd like to add some energy to your portfolio, as I said right at the beginning, you can always look at XLE and sort of mitigate the single stock risk. Maybe just uh, hold a little bit of the position in XLE and see where it goes because we cannot predict the price of the commodity, even though the demand seems to be pretty good. So uh, that's a wrap on the um, on the first uh, quarter in terms of energy stocks and the top performers. The interesting thing for me there from a personal point of view is that uh, in terms of the single stocks that I hold in my portfolio, which includes quite a few of them and they're diversified as well. So I have natural gas pipelines and integrated companies and they include uh, those familiar names that we talk about often, you know, Petrobras and Occidental Petroleum, Energy Transfer, Devon Energy, et cetera. So, uh, and of course, XLE I have as well. A big chunk of my investment portfolio from an energy portfolio point of view is in XLE. So uh, I have a a nice diversified portfolio. And in addition to that, I also have uranium. So I have uh, Cameco and I have Fission Uranium and I have Govix Uranium. So there's some uh, sort of alternate type, new, clean, green, environmentally friendly, safe energy in my energy portfolio as well. So I have a basket of about 10 stocks in addition to XLE, which was one of my largest positions because it's my little safety net, right? So uh, you can almost hedge your single stock risk by just holding the ETF. So guys, that's a wrap on this video. So quick and nasty, uh, the top performers for the uh, first three months of the year. Let me know what you think. And I look forward to chatting with you. Bye-bye.